Before we proceed with looking at this systematic review, please keep in mind this is in no way a substitution for professional medical help. This is simply a look at a systematic review which covered other studies very well and which yielded positive outcomes in, the certain, in regard to certain medical challenges, i.e. psychosis, the first episode of psychosis, and schizophrenia, which we'll cover more to schizophrenia towards the end, which is only a few minutes from now. So with that in mind, let us proceed with the research. The DUI citation will be listed. Uh, this study as well is published in full. So it's a great thing to dig into and look at basically how uh, basically they utilize data extraction and how they came to their conclusions as well. Love full published studies. With that in mind, let us proceed. Antioxidants and amino acids could play a role in the treatment of psychosis. The systematic review involved eight independent clinical trials of nutrient supplementation in 457 young people. The study by Firth, I hope I'm pronouncing the name appropriately, and colleagues in the first evaluation of nutrient supplementation trials in, quote, first episode psychosis. You'll see that mentioned a few more times, but it'll be under the acronym F E. P as in Paul. Basically, quote, as saying, nutrient supplementation in the treatment of mental illness is something which can be surrounded by both cynicism and hype. We conducted, quoting the researchers, this review just to see if there's any real evidence if such nutrients can actually help young people with psychosis. The outcome. Certainly, there is early indication that certain nutrients may be beneficial not to replace standard treatment but as an add-on treatment for some patients. Now we're gonna look at the full study right now in regard to how they broke down their data, which I kind of like because it, it does tend to help uh, eliminate a little bit of confounding per se, or bias, or if you could find bias or confounding, it's laid out for you to review forensically. But for example, if you look at the table, it gives dosages, amounts, the study's well listed out, real easy to follow. With that in mind, we are gonna look at the full study and pull out some gems. Now, you can't obviously cover the whole study, but I'm just gonna look at a few of the highlights. With that, let's, let's proceed. Adjunctive amino acids. Two studies have examined amino acids, taurine and cysteine as adjunctive treatments in FEP, first episode psychosis. Donnell et al, 2016, hypothesized that taurine's action as a peptide neurotransmitter and dash nitrosodiumethylamine, NDMA, all right, Receptor antagonist and neuroprotective agent will reduce both psychiatric symptoms and cognitive impairments. The high quality RCT randomized control trial found that after 12 weeks, four grams a day of adjunctive taurine significantly improved total symptoms, psychotic symptoms, depression, and functioning more than the placebo. However, there was no significant effects on cognition. So you see the benefit in regard to looking at taurine. To proceed to the next one, Con Conus et al. 2017, these are fairly recent studies, reported results from a double-blind RCT, randomized controlled trial, of N-acetylcysteine in 63 patients hypothesizing that these antioxidants would reduce the neuroinflammation and oxidative stress that may impair functioning of the parvalbulum, parvalbulum, if I can pronounce that appropriately, I apologize. I'm having a hard time speaking this afternoon. Interneurons in FEP, first episode psychosis. Although 2,700 milligrams a day of N-acetylcysteine supplementation significantly increased brain levels of the antioxidant glutathione after six months, there was no overall beneficial effect on symptoms compared to placebo. However, let's look at a secondary outcome. Significantly greater reductions in psychotic symptoms were observed among those with higher levels of baseline oxidative stress. Additionally, despite no effect on global cognition, and acetylcysteine significantly improved cognitive processing speed. Those are two great gems in regard to uh, the first episode psychosis. Now, I want to cover the one on schizophrenia because it deserves note, but at the same time too, it gives an example of the global scope of the systematic review in regard to looking at other ailments as well. Additionally, quoting, our previous meta-analysis found that adjunctive treatment with high dose B vitamins 
significantly reduced the total psychiatric symptoms among 297 long-term patients in seven different studies, potentially eliminating a lot of confounding. The potential beneficial effects of B vitamins and schizophrenia has recently been confirmed by Rothman et al. 2017, who reported reductions in total and negative symptom scores of, from adjunctive treatment with 15 milligrams of L-methylfolate, vitamin B9, along with significantly improved brain structure and connectivity, connect, connectivity, connectivity, after 12 weeks of treatment, which is pretty darn fast. Great gems from basically this overall review. I encourage you to look at the DOI, but let's conclude the video with the final statements from the researchers. All right, as stated, now the team are aiming to do just that. What are they gonna do? Well, they're gonna make a combination. A new clinical trial in which all of the potentially beneficial nutrients are combined within a single supplement and provided to young people with psychosis. Researcher added, individual nutrients appear to have moderate effect on mental health at best. A combined nutrient intervention explicitly designed from the evidence base in psychosis may therefore confirm larger and more beneficial effects for young people with this condition. Inductive logic. Quote, we will be testing this in Sydney, Australia in 2018 to learn more about the potential role of nutrition in mental health in the future. Beautiful study, again, all laid out, DOI, full studies published, so if you want to review it with your medical practitioner, it's easy, easy to do. I love full published studies. Again, I hope you find this information of use. I'll be seeing you all again in seven days. And as always, thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Look forward to seeing you next week. Catch you then. Bye.